Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, a very sexy one at episode 69. And we got somebody in the studio for this one, so it won't get awkward at all. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, the uh, video producer, I guess, for uh, IWC, RWA, and so much other stuff here in the Pittsburgh area. With me is my cohort from uh, currently, he's in Corpus Christi, Texas. But he will not be going to this out-of-nowhere elimination chamber coming up in a few weeks. I want to remind him so many times tonight as I already have. Look, his hair is all fussed up. He's so frustrated over this. <laughs> but he's the uh, ringside commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling. He can't even talk. He looks like he's going to poop himself. No, I'm, I'm fine. I, 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 yeah, um, I'll, I'll just say I'll be busy that day. <laughs> You'll be busy that day with Inspire Pro Wrestling. Don't worry, I'll be with better show anyways, I'm sure. Oh, sure. But uh, but at least I'll get my nine ninety nine worth uh, because I'm not in Austin, Texas. But uh, how you doing? Other than that, <laughs> I'm doing good. No, besides that, I'm doing pretty good. I'm I, I'm happy that we've made it to the milestone of episode sixty nine, and we get to be just as sexy as the regular wrestling mayhem show. So <laughs> that makes me happy. There you go, the very sexy indie mayhem show. Most weeks depends on what we go on. Anyways, uh, you can check out this and so many other shows at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. There is the Indie Mayhem Show. We had so much fun. Actually, Indie Mayhem Show uh, guest previously, Daniel Hooven, a photographer for IWC, uh, actually joined us on the Re- Re- uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show 469, talking about pro wrestling and Rybacks and, and, and saying naughty words in pro wrestling and so much more. Uh, and you can also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Let us know what you're thinking in Indie Wrestling if you have questions for any of our announced guests coming up or anything like that, uh, please drop us a line at any of that stuff. Uh, subscribe to this Indie Wrestling, or Indie Mayhem Show, excuse me, is on iTunes, or it's on YouTube, it's on Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, all over the place. Subscribe to it, share it with your friends, and, and, and tell us who you're digging, who you want more of, or anything like that. And also, big ups to our big ups. Wow. Uh, basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com for our intro and outro music. So let's get into it. We got somebody in studio this week. We got a lot of guests tonight, actually. A uh, whole lot. I think there's actually no pizza left for me, <laughs> so which is good for my diet. But anyways, uh, SliceOnBroadway.com, check them out. Uh, but anyways, with us in studio is darren de Niro. i understand his name is money that's the word in the street that is the word I on the street. i sold a t-shirt that said that so I, it automatically makes it true <laughs> how you doing tonight great man i'm beautiful day in southwestern pennsylvania what do you say <laughs> wonderfully windy it's it's it's, it's interesting yeah. um but anyways so uh you're with the international wrestling cartel also you wrestle with the uh, uh five star wrestling uh up here north of the city as well yes and pwr and Erie on and off so oh really you're up there too yes i'm up there in P- a couple matches nice too, so yeah Definitely a different vibe up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, I, I have a really funny story about my, my last PWR match, but uh, it's, uh, it's it's interesting. Oh, go ahead. We'll, oh, we'll, my, my last PWR match, uh, I teamed with Roger Corpo of the Face of Change up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's back healthy, and my baby boo's together with me. And uh, we're teaming, <laughs> and the ref knows the finish. He knows he knows the finish. And uh, so he said we won 15 minutes. When I watched the match back, we had 8 to 10. We won 10. So that, that first part of the story was not real. Uh, so he, the finish was uh, one guy gets crotched. Or, uh, I'm, I'm going to call him RJ because that's why I know him forever. As. Super kicks in the back of the head. I pull him off. I give him the down payment GF, which is just like a spinning DKO. Okay, so I, I hit the, the down payment GF. Uh, and then all I need to do is collapse on the student and pin him. I actually fall on him and I just hear the bell ring. And I'm like, you're not even listening to me. Double disqualification. I'm like, he just like... Just to, yeah, we were supposed to go over, and he just had none of it. He just double disqualified us, what? and it was it was supposed to be like a glorified squash match too, because like it was just a throw. The other team was supposed to help us get over, you know, get established. Yeah, a yeah, bit. yeah. Yeah, and I'm just like, like if you watch, I, I I have the video, and it like it's on like a private workers page, but like I like watching the moment where the bell rings, and you see the pure confusion on my face of like. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen like that. I'm like, dude, I'm like, I, and if I wasn't like eight months in, I'd probably go back and MF him like in the locker room. But once again, I'm eight months in, I don't really have that pool. Mm-hmm. And I, and you know, you get the speech of, Oh, you did too much out there, blah, blah, blah. And I watched the match. I'm like, it was only tag match on the thing. I mean, I understand. And like, like, you know, they're probably right. But it's just like, dude, you just had to count to three. That's all you had to do. Like, was it really that, that, like did, that pointing that proof, uh, pr- proving that point that much, but Hey, 
It's not my place to say. I'm just low guy on the totem pole. I have a DVD for the ref uh, that he can check out over at PittsburghWrestling.com. <laughs> well, I think he's wrestling now. I think he's back to wrestling. So, right? Oh, okay. Okay. But it was a nice run for me. Oh, he's a part-timer. Okay. Awesome. Well, anyways, we'll get into some stuff. I uh, want to talk about uh, you know, your upcoming in uh, IWC, as well as your Tough Enough video, which is making a little bit of noise uh, here coming up. Uh, but first of all, we'd like to start off with a little get-to-know-you question. Awesome. Okay. So, so you know, if you're in wrestling, if you're in this far, you have to be a fan. At this yes, point. you've got to be a fan. Definitely. So uh, the question we like to ask is, what is kind of your first memory or the thing that got you into pro wrestling in general? Um, I always remember watching my dad, but I always, I guess my best wrestling memory story is I say I knew my career path was set when I was two. I jumped off the arm of the couch onto my dad instead I was coming off the top rope. And I'm like, might as well stick with this now. That or when I was five, I started amateur wrestling. My dad was real, real specific of like, hey, you just want to wrestle. Didn't, didn't fill in details. And I show up first day practice. You go, hey, dad, where's the ring? And he goes, Darren, there, there is no ring, and I just start crying. And was your dad, your dad was into amateur wrestling? Yeah, my dad okay. wrestled in high school and okay. a year or two in college, so, but yeah, so that's passed on. So, so how was that? Because I, I kind of, I kind of had a similar path, and then I figured out real quick, I was like, oh, I don't belong here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like in like the fourth grade, you know, so, so I mean, did, was there that, that disconnect when you're like watching, what were you watching at the time on, what, WWF or something like yeah. that? And, and it just like, this doesn't look what I, like. TV, yeah, I, right? to this day, I, I don't know why. Like, I wasn't good my fresh. I mean, my first year, but I just decided, like, you know, I'll give this a chance. And then, like, by my second year, I started getting good and like, you're decent or something. Like, I'll stick with it. So I, I was, I was pretty decent to junior. So, uh, so is the, that was the path always going to be like? Well, I'll do this, get good at this, and 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 get to pro wrestling when when the, the, when the time comes. Y yes and no. I mean, I always thought like. You know, you have these impossible dreams sometimes. Your head, like, yeah, I want to play for the Pirates or something. And like, mm -hmm. mom was like, I, I want to be a wrestler, but sometimes you don't like comprehend that you could actually do it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, when I was like 13 or something, I'm like, you know what? I think I might be able to do this. I mean, I'm all of 130 pounds right now, but I think I might be able to do this. <laughs> so, and then that's when I started, you know, like, okay, let's just wrestle, you know, get through it and see what happens. Awesome. Awesome. So, so uh, bringing that around, you know, you're working with IWC, and uh, who'd you train under uh, up there? I trained uh, Iron City Wrestling Academy, Justin Idol, Super Hentai. There you go. Well, uh, there you go. That's yeah. <laughs> and we've had uh, uh bo both of those uh, we've had on Wrestling Mayhem Show over the years, and I know uh, Hentai especially, he's uh, had his time in Japan, so that's got yes. to come across a little bit in training. Yes, yes. Hentai is um very very strict, and I think I, I've told some of the other. I hope I uh, go down and train with the class that's training now, and I've I know. He, he, I've talked to them. They're like, "Oh man, hentai Sam are so far behind." Blah 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 blah. And I'm like, "You, you have to understand when when Joe when hentai says something isn't good, mm -hmm. like he, he will nitpick everything. He nitpicks my matches on every little thing I do. Like he yells about how I sell all the time. He hates how I sell. Mm -hmm. He says all you do is dead sell. I'm like, I don't think I dead sell that much, but I mean, so he's. But when you come out of it, you know, he's he's nitpicking for your good, your, your benefit. So. I, I, so it's definitely not you know let's just let's push you through let's just learn how to wrestle real quick no you're going to come out knowing how to wrestle mm -hmm. and now you debuted uh under a year ago yes. cage fury cage fury uh though sort of kind of we saw you in bits and pieces uh with this faces of change, faces of change. that they were doing we talked with joe reza uh, a couple months ago about that and kind of how that went <laughs> uh <laughs> So, uh, but anyways, you know, it was really, you know, you like a couple other new guys, you know, yes. coming up, you were kind of, uh, I didn't want, is it fair to call you a shield kind of group? I mean, you know, that people, was the vibe. People called us a shield rip off and we were like, me and me and Rod, uh, would joke about everything. So we loved it. We're like, yeah, I'm like, we should just force a bulletproof vest out there. Maybe just <laughs> the crowd. <laughs> I'm, uh, I mean, Vic Adonis is going to hit, Vic Adonis hits a, a spear for Christ's sakes. I mean, right. come on, our big dude hits a spear. I'm like. Really, we're not helping the cause at all. I should probably start like acting so. Crazy. Which of you is Dean Ambrose and which is Seth Rollins? I mean, I would I would say Raj is Seth Rollins because uh, you know he's he's the smaller one. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm I'm a little crazier, I guess. And uh, yeah, so I I I take Dean Ambrose in this one, I guess. Maybe I throw my flow back down in front of my face. You know, I got it. <laughs> so so you you had that that kind of a uh, uh, debut there, the the big reveal at Cage Fury. Yeah, and uh, had a, a, a few matches since, right? Yeah, a couple here and there. So. Mm -hmm. um so so uh, how how was that transition for you uh, uh finally getting called up there um well originally we like you know chuck's like all right <sighs> okay here you got you guys are gonna be done in 10 months 10 months which is like unheard of most people have like a whole year and mm -hmm. he's trying to get us ready to go in 10 months now we always had two so days. this is 10 months from like the beginning of you guys training yes okay now i'm not sure about other classes classes how consistently had it but we had two days 
all the week. Like Sunday would be more of Justin's day and he just Justin's a lot higher pace, you know, go, 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 let's learn. And mm-hmm. Tuesdays would be our review day with Hentai and he would break it down, slow it down. And there was originally uh, five of us in our class. And the two of the kids like quit after they paid all their money, which is uh, the most asinine thing in the world, but I don't know. But then you're, you're always going to have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Three is the magic number from the Iron City Wrestling Academy. Like the last like five classes had three people. Really? I, my class had three. Uh, Dravico, Lee Rhines, Madison was the class before me. Mm-hmm. The class before The current class training has three. The class for that was Remy LeVay, Sam Cassidy, and uh, Hayden Farah. Three is the magic number. So I'm is like, it, is it? Is it? Do you do you find? Oh, you know, obviously, you guys now. Well, when you debuted, you were together in a group uh, as a threesome. Like, is there some sort of like that's the magic number for you guys to stick together, or like like with, something with the vibe there? Did, I don't know. Do, do be- you gel well with the? Did you did you know your trainees before going into it? No, no. And the funny thing is, uh, Raj is like I, I don't talk to people. I literally talk to two people at a time. I usually talk to Brittany Baker, who's a saint and deals with my, my garbage more than anybody. <laughs> like, seriously, she, she ha- helps manage my life. I'd be totally screwed without her. And I talked to Roger Corpo, who, like, I just, he's, he's my, like, my baby boo. That's all I say. And I hated Roger the first day I made him. Like, this dude's a total douchebag. And then I actually talked to him and I got to know him for a little bit just via Facebook messages and such. And I'm like, dude, this dude's hilarious. Now we just, we just, fuck around with it. I mean, oh, sorry. Am I allowed to swear? You're allowed yeah, to. You're it, 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 not like the last show, but you're good. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> we just mess around with each other and just tell jokes all day. Like, like I'll just get random texts from him. Just like, we're huge Young Buck marks, so we'll just take a lot of Young Buck jokes. But yeah, and so I didn't I didn't know anyone. Uh, Victor Donna showed up out of nowhere. He like, mm-hmm. I like I knew RJ coming into and he's this big dude coming in. I'm like, hmm, yeah, this guy's good size. And and then but by the end of training, maybe we were just so tight. Like, uh. You know, I I said I hang out with RJ when I can. You know, I watch pay per views at his house when I can. You know, I go over. He's he has a lady friend now, so he's a little less time for me. I'm just uh, the lonely the lonely face of change by myself. And uh, Vic Adonis is no longer on this plane of earth. He uh, he died. Vic Adonis died. Not really. It's his birthday today, but in storyline, Vic Adonis <laughs> died being a prostitute in Mexico. Me and me and Roger Corpo decide that. So Vic Adonis, it's his birthday. It's for you, bud. I have so many good like Vic Adonis stories from training. The dude would just he, he was. The mid '80s wrestler today, like, dude, mm-hmm. just be drinking during ring crew, just like, did not care, like, just, <laughs> so many good lines. The guy was real life crazy, and like, that's always good to have on your side. I, I got a picture here. Uh, I believe this is from your debut. At yes, Fury. yes. Uh, highly well, episode sixty nine. Went on a little sixty nine right here in a yeah. totally pro <laughs> wrestling sense. For those on uh, audio, he's actually got what well, you're setting up for a pile driver here. On yeah, Justin the the, the, the uh, cradle tombstone. I, I affectionately call the final payment. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, you have a lot of fun with the Gennaro thing. Oh yeah, I mean, you know what? I've, I've had this name since I was 18 years old. Chuck tried so hard to talk me out of it, and I'm like, dude, I've been signing autographs since I've been 18 years old as a joke. I, like it, people call me Double Dean Gennaro before I even stepped foot in the ring. It's like it's literally like a nickname of mine. I'm not abandoning this. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it just came to me one day. And like when I, I was gonna say when I thought it up, I had no clue who my uncle Julio was or my uncle D'Angelo. Yeah, I had no clue who they were. I just I just one day I'm like, damn Gennaro, like yeah, I can make money in this business one day. I'm like, oh, it rolls off the tongue. And skinny 18 year old me's like, that's your wrestling name. There you go. <laughs> Well, uh, this this far into it, just a few months into it, you're you're already making a splash. This opportunity came up for a lot of people with uh, WWE's Tough Enough returning, yeah. and of course, uh, with the with this age of social media, it's been you know, we've even had our kind of joke character submit a Tough Enough video down here. Yeah, uh, our our hobo uh, did. Yeah. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, great seeing. Uh, I I think this is the best mix of of video entertaining both good and bad videos that we've seen for a tough enough oh, because yeah. it's so easy for anybody to do it now. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, for instance. Uh, but uh, you're, you've been featured on the front page for a good bit now. Uh, yeah. The funny thing I was, I was so against it too. I'm like, this is mm-hmm. a sham. I'm not going to do it. And Brittany Baker wants to text me. He's like, you're going to do this. And I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, no, you should. And uh, I'll let you watch the video and I'll explain what my thought process was afterwards. So <laughs> uh, I'm doing it. Yeah. It was not showing the video here, but we'll link it here in the show. Oh, notes. Awesome. But uh, here you are uh, down at the uh, glorious IWC's uh, 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 wrestling uh, training facility. Uh, but uh, but no, what was, what was your thought process kind of going once, into this? Once again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over watching the pay-per-view of Britney's and I'm talking to her and she's like, I'm like, Britt, I, I, I guess it's pointless. I can't outstory these people. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I was or, thinking. Because you're comparing to like what well, Jimmy Nuts is talking about his childhood. 
you know and, yeah and even even facade you know very much yeah know, it's like he, my dad died my cat died and my i died cancer and survives i mean i'm not trying to say they're sob stories but i'm like i don't i, I lived a good life yeah i yeah, have yeah. an only child in a nice area <laughs> i'm not I like i have nothing to feed off of i'm sorry i mean yeah i got bullied a little bit but everyone does you know it's, right, it's right, right, right. so i'm like so i was like thinking like you know what let's just totally try to like, I don't want to say be a heel cause I didn't come off as a heel, but I was like, let's just say, do you want, do you want a story? Do you want to be entertained? Do you want someone to actually like, do you want you another Maven or do you want someone to actually like maybe work with this? Do you want someone to like this? If I win this, I think I could be a WWE superstar. You know, I'd still train. I lift, I diet. I do all, I try to do all the things right to be a best professional wrestler I can right now. So obviously if I get the opportunity to go to the WWE level, I'm going to do all those same things probably tenfold cause it'll be my full-time job. So just very frank and 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 out there, right? Yeah, like I said, I'm being straightforward. I'm no no bells, no gimmicks. I'm like, hey, do you want someone to win this that will do it, or do you just want a story? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's that was my same plan. Uh, what do you think? Was it seems like there? It, it does seem like I don't know if it's the right time or, or this says anything for the area, but you know, like I said, nuts is up there. But Dylan Bostic, who's who's in yeah. the area with IWC and other groups, uh, uh, facade, and, and it seems like there's a, a pretty strong representation yeah. making. A, I mean, all uh, all those names I've mentioned on the front page or featured on Raw as samples. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to you have to consider. I mean, uh, facade has a great story, mm -hmm. and facade's also been around for ten years. He has a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's going to get his fan support. Dylan Bossick, how many Twitter followers that dude has? Like, wait, wait, wait. Facade also made a big impact, no pun intended, for uh, TNA's uh, yeah. gut check challenge a couple years ago. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a phenomenal... So much so that they shut it down. Yeah, I mean, he's a phenomenal <laughs> performer, and, you know, he has a great following. So, of course, he's going to get some love. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, does, it takes one person that doesn't know him to, you know, to see a story. You know, so it's a good combination of that. Uh, Jimmy Nutt's great story again, but once again, he's been around for a couple years. Has a nice following building up. Dylan Bostic, you know, like 90,000 Twitter followers. You can't... Yeah, that, that whole Dustin proved Be by Justin Beaver. That's all I have yeah. to say. When you're yeah. proved by him, you're gonna have something happen. <laughs> did they, didn't they, did WWE do something with Justin Beaver? Or he, I, they, they made some jokes about him. I think they did today, the and I got he was talking about. It. He's like, I'm so angry about it. He's like, this is something with Seth Rollins, and he's like, really? That's like all I got. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> watched his video. You, that's that's what went down. Yeah, it was. I mean, I I love Dylan Bostic. He's a great a great promo. I, I mean, I just I love the I love the gimmick. Mm. Mm -hmm. but uh but, but what do you think about you know when this came up you said you know what do you think that this is impossible or i had to try this it was, it was like no they're not picking any one of these videos they probably have who they want picked already mm -hmm. this is a sham it's just to, it's just to draw you know attention to the show and then like i said I, I got talked into it and then i was like all right well if you're talking me into it you're gonna film this too and then we got down to school <laughs> and i put a lot of baby oil on my chest and i pumped up for about 30 minutes and there's also there's there's an unreleased video where my get my plumber's there justin plumber aching me on the whole time uh, <laughs> there's one where like was he like you gotta pump up bro no it wasn't that that there's that no the, my backup one was gonna be like you do i literally like have my like a towel over my crotch and like underwear like like just showing off my meat and v and like i'm pulling my pants down I'm, like gotta work with what i got right now this is i mean <laughs> i'm in okay shape let's see what i can do with this but the whole gimmick of that one was he was gonna blur it out so it looked like i was naked like i don't go anything but myself and I'm like, dude, they're saying no nudity. I'm like, I don't know, my day job, I might get in trouble with this. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that. That we nixed that and decided to go with a more traditional route, which I guess is working okay right now. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so uh, you go check that out. It's, like I said, it's over there. He's under under uh, Darren Lyles. Darren Lyles. I I constantly tweet about it under Darren underscore Denaro, which you see right there, mm -hmm. and well, other funny tweets I throw out there. But anyway, <laughs> so follow me. Awesome, awesome. Well, anyway, back to IWC. Uh, you've been around for a bit. Super Indies coming up. I noticed you've been on Twitter campaigning for Super, Super Indies. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, are you 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 ready to you ready to to to, to stick out in, in Super Indie? I I I've been watching these shows since I've been thirteen, so I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of Super Indies, a lot of moments. Super and like, let's see, let's see. There's fourteen of them, so <laughs> I'm only twenty four. I'm not that old. Okay, not, okay, just checking. The hate video said uh, of me on on you. There's a hate video of me on YouTube. On, you search really? my name. Yes, he picked everyone that was on the uh, the WWE like posted, and he's like, "You look like you're thirty, bro." And I'm like, twenty four, but thanks, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. There was actually a comment Joe Dombrowski said about. Um, I think it was when Joshua Singh and uh, 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 what. Alex Daniels. Alex Daniels. I, I think yeah. he said that both of these guys were six when Super Indy started. Well, what, the, what year? What Super Indy is this? Fifteen or this is fourteen this year. Fourteen. So, so I was ten. Wow. So yeah, I mean, but yeah, Super Indy. I've been watching a bunch of them, and like people think because I'm a bigger guy, I just want to like I want to go to the Fed and just hit my three moves of doom and you know 
pander to the crowd. Like, no, I, I love independent wrestling. I'm a huge, like, independent mark. I know all the names, and I could talk to any person out there and keep it going. And I love to throw that style out there, you know, the New Japan style, the English style. And I just like to just go. I mean, with what we had to do with the face – sorry, but sorry, you're like leaning so me off. No, no, no. I just, I just, there's a pop up over here. Yeah. Uh, so what we're doing with the face to change and founding fathers, you know, it's more of a brawling style, and mm -hmm. it, it'd have been nice to, you know, have the opportunity to show, like, hey, I could do more than that, and, you know, I, I could go for a guy that has a little bit of size to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. And uh, well, we, 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 you know, we, we'll get the Mayhem Nation to bug plumber for that. I don't know. We already have Bobby out there giving him ideas at intermission. <laughs> so. I heard that. I think. <laughs> I think uh, Monkey Nuts would be a phenomenal tag team. <laughs> uh, Bobby, I know you're you're on on the mic there. You want to tell us mm -hmm. real quick what your idea was from this past show? Um, yeah, I think that uh, Jimmy Nuts and uh, Space Monkey should team up and form Monkey Nuts. But I agree with this totally. Who knows? <laughs> I'm just so a fan. Just, the first time just I've leaving money on the table, not, not teaming those two up. <laughs> <laughs> Plumber was like, "Oh yeah, great, good idea," and then he like turned low, like, "Who the hell was that?" <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. We got we got Riz and Bobby FJ Town on there. They actually attended the the uh, Road to Super Indie this past weekend, so we'll get your thoughts on that show uh, in a little bit. Um, and I definitely, you know, if you want to stick around, and talk about the show in general with us. I guess I can sneak know. around. I got some in the morning, but I'm always I'm, I'm used to not sleeping. All right. Uh, so we got a few uh, questions. First of all, what are you watching today, uh, wrestling wise? Wrestling wise, what what did I watch today? Uh, probably some New Japan out there. I, I was kind of busy today. I wish she was around. I hit the gym, tanned. You know, I actually went to amateur practice. You know, I coach. I, like I said, I coach amateur wrestling. So you're currently coaching. How much does that uh, incorporate with uh, what you're doing now? Um, I mean, did that give you? It seems like that. I mean, you're already athletic if you're doing that. I mean, it's it's pretty much. It almost, helped like body control and some of the transition. It helped a lot like that. Okay. And obviously suplexes. And I wrestled some Greco Roman in college, but yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm back on the mat. Summer wrestling, love it. You know, when you've been doing something since you've been five, it just becomes a part of you, and you just don't ever let it go. So that's my other love besides pro wrestling. It's pro wrestling, amateur wrestling. <laughs> One helps the other. So it yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. Back to what you were watching, though. Yeah. Uh, so I really didn't watch too much wrestling today. I probably uh, probably just caught some highlight videos here and there, of some various shows. Mm -hmm. Nothing really too serious. Wasn't really able to sit down today. Took a nice nap though. So went to me lose some. <laughs> <laughs> or how was your day like? <laughs> uh, yeah, took a nap, tanned, lift. There you go. That's my exciting day. Wrestled. <laughs> awesome. And uh, we also, you know, you're of course a little short in the business right now, but you know, we've had somebody after two matches on on the show, and just had her on last week again after a year. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we'll do the same with you if we're still able to. Yeah. Uh, but uh... <laughs> probably, I'll probably be an indie schmuck forever. Indie for life, baby. <laughs> there you indie go. Wrestling. So, what's the best and worst thing so far about uh, uh, working in indie wrestling? Uh, best things getting cheered by little kids. That's right. We didn't talk about this. In Five Star, you said you're like a white face, oh, totally. white meat baby face. They call up me there. The, like all like you know, it's a lot of IWC people in there. And the running joke is they call me Mini Cena because mm -hmm. like and because. <laughs> I have, I have some muscles and kids kids tend to cheer for me for some reason so now I actually hit John Cena moves up there a lot like I hit the flying <laughs> you attack. just wait you just go for it you're just like oh you know yeah what? yeah no the last match I wrestled um I was like okay come back I'm gonna hit you some solar tackles and Fletcher's like please jump into one I'm like okay for you I will and I'm like I'm gonna hit I'm gonna suplex you and I'm gonna hit you with the, the Cena bomb and mm -hmm. Fletcher's like okay so while I'm in mid lift for the Cena bomb type move you know he does right for the five knuckle shuffle Flexer yells oh my god he's in the chain gang <laughs> I, I'm sort of laugh Raj Corpo's in the corner putting his head down like we just couldn't like contain ourselves we're like just like compose myself but yeah uh, like it's also nice because like it's all more merchandise but I, I you know I like I thought he would be a horrible bat a good guy. Mm -hmm. I, I thought like there's no way people like me. I like I, you know I I, I, I kind of people think I'm arrogant now. I mean people think I'm kind of douchey. I like, got people, but I'm like a better good guy. I think as crazy as it sounds. So I love yeah, white me baby face five star wrestling. <laughs> so having having uh, the kids cheer you. What, what's the worst thing so far? Um, the road trip back from like Meadville or Clearfield when you're just wanting to get home and, and you're no it gets better you're looking at that like arrival time and then you remember the arrival time is just so you get back to the training center to put away the ring and unload you're like and then you always beat the truck back so you have that, that that like 10 minute to 15 minute span of you're just sitting there waiting for the truck you're like just having to think about unloading it you're just like like oh god here it comes and like, that's <laughs> so, yeah that's 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 pretty sucky but hey, it's pandas it's what it is 
Awesome, awesome. Now, I say we got. I want to see if they got any questions in here. We got Bobby and Riz who were there uh, this past Sunday for uh, uh, Road to Super Indie the Dance, and uh, Wheels is joining us. Also, we're going to talk about a little bit of RWA here later in the show because they got a show coming up. But Tracy Smothers of all people, oh, Tracy, <laughs> <laughs> Wild Eye Southern Boy, Wild Eye Southern Boy, exactly. Um, so, do you guys have any, have any questions for our guests since we have you on the line here? Bobby, Riz, you go, Bobby. you're the. You're the- <laughs> You're the you're the new host. Are so you go first? New host? I'm not a new host. Oh, new new guest on the show. Here. <laughs> um, what's been your favorite match so far? Oh wow! Oh, there you go. Um, that's so hard to pick because there's a lot of like things I like about like different matches. Like, I had the main event with Andrew Palace, but the crowd was so dead because like it was our first time in that arena at Five Star, and no one really knew who we were. But it was a pretty solid match. Uh, my first match was though it wasn't a good match. It was just fun. Like. There's like 250 people, and 50 of them like were my friends and family. So getting like the huge pop was kind of a cool experience. And then my most recent match um, over in Five Star was pretty fun because uh, you know uh, they asked us not to do anything with faces to change. So me and Roger Corpo are huge Backstreet Boy fans, and our gimmick there is the Backstreet Hit Squad, where we come out to Backstreet Boys, and we actually end up having a dance off to uh, everybody by the Backstreet Boys. Nice. So yeah, that was that. So those, those are probably my three right now. So you get a, it, it's kind of interesting because I, 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 you know, saw this. You know, uh, we talked about Eden Vale kind of briefly on the last show, but yeah. like how he was doing the evil character over here, but his rocker character over here, and yeah. seemed to stretch out. So you're, are you finding that you're you're able to play a little bit in this kind of ball game over here? Yeah, you, you know, it's 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 weird because like PWR, we're still the faces of change, mm-hmm. and but we're still like it's our way of the faces of change. You know what I mean? And then. You know, at five star, you know, the faces. So we do the Backstreet Hit Squad type thing, you know, have a little more fun. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, IDBC, you know, more than just the no name thug face to change. So I have to do that there. So, and then, you know, I've, I've worked other places where I get to do my own thing. Like I team with uh, Remy LeVay over at Full Throttle. He's my partner over there now. Uh, you know, I've got to do singles work for Justice's American Revolution Wrestling, where I had Brittany as I had a valet for the first time. That was a new experience too. Nice. I had Brittany Baker as a valet. Never had to do anything in the match for. So we had like, it was like, I'm my ninth match, her first time doing anything. We're like, Okay, we could do this. Most painful match of my life. But uh, Patrick Hayes chopped the ever living hell oh, out of me geez. a million times. And like the worst is like my like he's chopped me from my parents. So like my parents, my dad like hit him again. But like <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my dad. So that's like the worst part. And like I look over at Brittany and like I just like see like I look in her eyes and it's almost like 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 stay down, just like do something. Like don't let him beat your ass anymore. But I'm like oh don't worry, I got this. Oh another one. And then yeah, then the match got a little messed up and I just got out of dodge. But yeah. My chest was pretty well fit up for yeah, you. I saw I saw what he was doing to uh, uh, Pedro DeLuca in his match in VOW. Yeah, <laughs> he, he 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 likes to throw them chops. He yes, likes he does. Them. Yes, he does. Um, oh, so your dad being a being an amateur wrestler, what does he think of you going pro? Uh, you know, he was he was the one who introduced me to wrestling, so it's kind of his fault. But <laughs> you know, he, he, they always wanted me to use that degree, and it's it's one of those things I'm young now. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm well, at least you have it, right? So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I use it. I use it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for my day job but you know it's one of those things i'm 24 now you know i'm not going to try to do this one like if i'm nowhere in like 35 right, this obviously is, this is your window yeah i, I always say I'm, I'm dieting now i'm actually trying to like, do everything right like even because i was always had a horrible diet but now i'm even trying to diet around like three years let me give it all i got when i turn 28 nothing happened i'm getting really fat becoming a comedy heel thrown in the <laughs> towel <laughs> Fat comedy heel. <laughs> That's when you just start. Is this? Are you? Be, do you become the third member of Party Gras with the Lord Zoltan? Um, no, I, I, I'm trying. There's to no slight on Zoltan. Just I, this. No, he, <laughs> I've seen him last doing Party Gras. And no, I'm talking out, like coming out to the entirety of Big Butts. The Ooh, entire that's song I always said I want to do a uh, uh, Nate Webb full song intro like you know he's coming out teenage dirtbag i always want to do that just just mess teenage around the dirt bag. that the greatest entrance that's up there for greatest entrance in the history of wrestling his teenage dirtbag entrances i've never seen that <laughs> dude the youtube they're like eight minutes one time he comes up to like 99 loaf balloons then teenage dirtbag so it's an eight minute entrance his entrance is eight minutes and madman pond is just chilling in the ring just watching it happen yeah nate web entrance is great wow i hate when there's like 30 seconds before the guy comes out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so one day, if, if I knew my, my last, like, if I ever get signed to WB, and, like, I know I have, like, so many matches left, one of them is going to be an eight-minute entrance. I'm just warning you all ahead of time. Just, Considering most segments are, like, six minutes. I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm going to be gone in two months. Just let me do this. Let me have my one moment. I'm If I'm back in, like, three years, you could punish me and bury me back after I get cut. <laughs> just let me have my moment on my way off. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you guys have anything else for Darren here before we talk more uh, uh, about the show this past week? 
uh, just a little, a little question here. Uh, what is your, what was your best advice given, and your worst advice? Hmm, hmm, that's tough. As, as, you guys are throwing, you're not throwing me any softballs here. You're throwing the heaters on the outside corner. We've been doing this for a while. Jeez, <laughs> oh, uh, best advice. I'm trying to think. Is there, you know, that's the thing about wrestling. In my perspective, it's almost overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Like, because you know, it's it, it, there's so much stuff there. And she's like, do this. We'll do this. Do this. Do this way. And you're like, what? What, what, what should I go with? Um, worst advice would be Jock Sampson telling me as a baby face, I need to bang a rat in every town. That's just not gonna happen. <laughs> It's not going to happen. Have you seen most female wrestling fans? Yeah. Love them to death, but nah, that's not going to happen. Uh, that was probably my worst advice. Uh, best advice, honestly, it's... It's probably, it's probably good advice for Jock Sampson, though. Yo, great advice. Do- I mean, I'm a huge Jock Sampson mark, by the way. <laughs> Love Jock Sampson. I will watch all of his promos and just crack up. Um, you don't give him the mic enough in uh, IWC. Oh, no. He should, he should have at least no. a two-minute promo every show. Yeah. Minimal. Yeah. Uh, my best advice is probably just... A per- this person that says just taking everything with a grain of salt and go with it. Mm-hmm. Said so, so like so I don't know what the hell I'm doing honestly. I just wing it half, half the time I'm out there, try my best. So maybe one day I'll figure it out. Awesome. Hopefully, Mr. Wheels, do you have anything uh, not dirty after the last show you were just on uh, <laughs> that you'd like no, to ask no, before I, move I'm on? I'm not that person that you're talking about on that other show. I'm the polite sound guy. The polite right, sound here. guy who uh, who was once victimized yeah, by Jock yes. Sampson, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, and I agree with Darren. I love Jock Sampson. I listening to Jock Sampson stories are great. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, are. But my question for Darren is: with the new um, training class down in the IWC, you see any like hot prospects like right out of the gate or anything so far? Um, yeah, there's a lot of talent down there. You know, it's. They, I mean, they've they've had the rough go of only having one day a week, and you know, they, some of them have really tough schedules. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I see a lot of talent. You know, there's Big Zach, you big dude. You know, it's, you can't teach size. That so comes down to it. Uh, He's the guy that carried. He was carrying Jimmy Demarco out that one time, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, you can't teach size, man. I mean, that that comes down to right there. Uh, yeah, I think they're all going to be really good. So, we'll just have to see. Mm-hmm. And this is a class. I mean, if, if nothing else. Um, this is a training school that has produced guys like DJ Z that's up there, Logan Chulo now hanging in the NXT, uh, and and you know guys like Facade, guys that have been around the Indies and been around you know, on TV in some cases. It's a pretty good lineage, pretty good company to be in. Yes, mm-hmm. and like DJ Z would just pop up every now and then. Mm -hmm. just like randomly like hey guys and he'll blow you away with some cool stuff and you're just like i suck at wrestling he shows up at shows he's not even booked on like not in the virgil way yeah but it's it's like it's it's like the anti-virgil it's like oh awesome you happen to show (laughs) up i'm actually glad that you're here i don't even care yeah yeah it's the (laughs) anti-virgil we're like hey this guy's on commentary really we're not okay sure you know and bring and randomly brings russian guys with him and and have killer matches so yeah you know i mean we we always say that he has like some kind of foreign exchange program uh (laughs) Yeah, chips them over, but awesome. Uh, I'm sorry, Wiz. Did I interrupt you on something there? Oh no. I, what I was just going to say was, I I have a friend here that went to school up here at Cal U. That's a trainee, so I and he's been telling me how much fun he's been having training down Tristan? there and everything. So I I can't wait to see what IWC produces out of him. Mm-hmm. Is the name Tristan by the chance? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, he's in a new, new class. Okay, they're just, they're learning the basics. I haven't really dealt with him too much. I'm dealing with the slightly more advanced class. I've been with them for a while, so just being their bump thummy. So <laughs> taking a lot of bumps. Not not as much anymore. They're mostly bumping each other, which is a lot nicer. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Uh, well, th- thanks a lot. We're, uh, we'll talk a little bit of IWC this past weekend. Of course, yeah. Super Indy coming up. We'll oh, probably yeah. have a little stronger breakdown of Super Indy once the brackets get kind of released here. We know kind of generally who's coming up here. Hey, well, who are you excited seeing coming in out of the invitees? Five, five of them announced this last show. I'm, honestly, I am excited for all of them. Uh, Trevor Lee, dude, just blows it away. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for Ray Rowe because I love Ray Rowe. I would like to have been beaten up by him, but I guess I'm not in the tournament. <laughs> but uh, you, you just, can't win them all. You, you could just say the wrong st- thing backstage, you know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I was like, Plumber, let me wrestle Ray Rowe. I'll let him massacre me, and it'll be fun. Uh, it'll, just, uh, just have him beat up the entire faces of change. Just, yeah, just I mean, it, you know, it looks we, have, we, we have it coming. No, I'm, I love Ray Rowe. Trevor Lee's amazing. Cedric's amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. Andrew Everett will do things that a human being shouldn't be able to do, but he does. Um, and they're all super cool guys. I've worked with Trevor Lee. I think was on Ring Crew with me 
added Ring of Honor show. So talk about things changing quick on you. Wow. Yeah. Uh, then Cedric and uh, Everett were on the show too. Super. Well, cool. So that's uh. Well, I guess he's is he doing Ring of Honor? I'm not keeping up with Trevor it Lee? as well as I should be. Yeah. No, but I mean he's in PWG, which you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and him and Everett are. I know PWG with a lot of that footage. Uh, Jesse said that uh, like three of the guys were in a three way match, so it was really easy to get footage for those things. Yeah, uh, nice. But, and of course, Ro, uh, of course, making waves there in Ring of Honor as well as Cedric Alexander. So uh, heavy kind of ROH representation here in general. Yeah. And P- P- good to see PWG too. Yeah, I mean it's. I think for Super Indie, you got to get those those top two indies. I mean, every now and then you'll find a guy that's just under the radar. And like IWC has been really good over the years of finding dudes like right before they totally blow up. Mm-hmm. Like they had Adam Cole before he became the biggest ACH. Thing. ACH before he became the biggest thing in wrestling. They're still working Sammy with Callahan, his... a young Sammy Callahan. Yeah. So yeah. they, I don't know how Chuck does it back in the day and how Norm did it, and but they, uh, hopefully Plumber can keep the tradition going of just getting lucky and finding these dudes before they get crazy huge and you know. Mm-hmm. Good, a good good way and then, and then still uh people that come in because we've had like you know jay lethal came in during the black machismo days randomly you know speaking of i, I was watching this earlier i love black machismo <laughs> loved it it's the greatest part of dna during the time it was it was you, thank you like but you still wanted more because you're like he's capable of so much more than this right but he's so good at this. i know i love black. that's why i still watch tna so <laughs> black and cheese we were yeah we were kind of railing it a little bit earlier but um I, they've been they've had a rough go right lately yeah yeah it's uh you know i feel bad for him because you, you know you want to see as many people succeed because mm. and I mean, a bunch of good guys to, there oh yeah yeah i mean uh, I ran into uh, EC3 at Erie and super cool dude. Talked to me about my match. Yeah, you know, yeah. Tried to give a good advice. So he e- went- easily him Rockstar Rockstar Spud, hands down best thing on that show. Yeah, th- th- EC3 is one of those dudes. You just you just question like how did WWE miss it with this guy? Right. I mean, just like how like these mate like what what did you not see in this dude? But yeah. Everything happens for a reason, I guess. All right. Let's talk the show this past weekend. First of all, I'd be remiss if I did not mention the team up of Dravico and Space Monkey, complete with Titan Tron. Turned down for what? <laughs> it, it, yes. <laughs> um, I, I want to touch base with you. you know, the, the two, first, Bobby, this was your first mm-hmm. IWC show. Uh, it was so I my think first I, indie wrestling it show. was your first indie wrestling show. You've been to WWE shows. You've been, mm-hmm. you're the one that brought us. Uh, was it AON was the fed out your way yeah, they had TV yeah. I've I guess. watched them on TV right so I mean I just I kind of want generally what are your impressions of a show like what, what you just saw this past weekend with IWC I had a blast it was amazing that's mm. why I'm coming back next month <laughs> there you go I'm so excited. and he's and he's coming in all the way from jo- Johnstown Johnstown yep. Ooh, that's about an hour hour almost two hours away well you're picking a good show to drive well I mean you came anyways last year, but this is a this is a show you don't want to miss. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Super Indies are always awesome. I mean, I would show up even if I was I wasn't doing anything on the show just to watch. So, <laughs> but yeah, I love Super Indie. Love it. Awesome, awesome. What what really stuck out for you there, Bobby? Um, probably um the main event, of course, it was amazing. Oh. Um, which was the, all the all the qualifier matches mm-hmm. were really good. Um, the one guy was really tired, as we said. <laughs> oh, that was the uh, uh, Alex Daniels and, and Josh Singh that we mentioned that went to the 15 minute draw, got a five more minutes, double overtime, double overtime. Um, yeah, they were they were tired. Yeah, I, I I was watching that match and I'm like, and like you know they, they're so talented and they do this all the time. You know they, mm-hmm. they those dudes can go, and I've been watching Josh out there and Josh is the coolest guy ever. I'm like, man, how much more can this dude take? <laughs> I'm like he is he is he is willing I mean he is riding the struggle bus right now man like take it home or something but uh yeah the, uh, Alex and Josh are, are absolutely amazing I can't say enough good things about I worked in can uh Alex Daniels gave me the most painful move ever with the 630 splash Ooh. I didn't I didn't even I didn't even sell it I just got up and started saying that effing sucked and while I'm rolling around <laughs> like it was um, and then he tried so hard to make it like nice for me and I, it just didn't work it just didn't <laughs> So well, it's gotta be hard to land something like that. Yeah, I, I, I was hoping he would like roll, but it, like, like you know, like his shoulder like, kind of hits and rolls. Right, right, right. No, it was full whatever he weighs on my chest. I can't, and body. I mean, I can't even understand the physics of not trying to hurt somebody with something like that. And, and, and seeing the weird landings where like my head hit it, nothing else. My knees hit it, it's nothing yeah, else. You know. And, and the worst is you're watching. You're like, that's so pretty. Oh my god, <laughs> it's coming right for me. Yeah. You're like, that did not feel good. And you're like, <laughs> it looks so cool. Yeah, and the best angle, I'm sure. 
Yeah, it was, it, it, I wish I had a camera, but I didn't. So, uh, when he, what was it, Riz? When he when he jumped to the outside, we were like, you were just like, I no, thought, no. <laughs> I thought he was gonna miss and hit some people in the crowd. Was that was that yeah? That was that ridiculous flip move he did on yeah. the far yeah. side. Alexander isn't even real. That dude is so. Cr- if that guy's in PWG in three years, I, I'm quitting indie wrestling because I'm not going anywhere. Because <laughs> he is so talented. Like I can't say. Enough good things about that he guy. He did this move. It was this flip move. I don't even know I if there like was a corkscrew like move. A cork- it didn't look like there was a prayer for him to land it. I didn't know if he was going to hit the guy or land in the entire front row. And like me and Chachi on the camera were just all yelling, like, "What is happening?" <laughs> Whenever that was happening, we were popping on 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 our side of it. Yeah, but it was it was nuts mm-hmm. and unfortunately they just kind of got down to all we have left is punching each other in the face but yeah. <laughs> but but you know I, I pacing whatever it is i don't know if they do matches that long too often but uh, uh really incredible yeah. <laughs> really really fun match and worth checking out for sure so uh, anything else bob you, you mentioned the main event um you know we did have a cancellation with uh colin delaney in the four-way that involved T- tommy dreener Dalton castle and our ring of our guy uh, rj city how's rj city not on ring of honor yeah or how's that dude not gonna be exactly he seems like he's mm-hmm. the per- like I, I don't know like look wise or anything like yeah, look wise too he, but... he has a, he's not he's built pretty well i mean mm-hmm. he, he's not like you know it's oh my god it's just jack he's not like he's like a slob rolling out there no no i mean no. He's, he's, it's i think the only thing that killed him is aiden english being there right now right yeah, I right. mean, and that's that's the thing about WWE. It's just what they need. And those don't know, in English had had this kind of singing thing when he came out before they started doing the thing with yeah. Gotch. Um, and and that's RJ used to, and he still does that in his yeah. kind of intro promo. You know, I mean, and I know I know uh, RJ's a guy that does. It always throws me when you guys yell RJ like before or after the show because I'm like, City, what's what's happening? Yeah, there's here? like ten RJs and they're all looking at you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm just like, what's happening here? It's like Mike's, you know. That's that's a problem too. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, but I, like I, I'm, I'm seeing like he does improv classes. He does all this stuff up there. Mm-hmm. Like obviously he's done some TV stuff. You know, like so. I mean, wrestling is not, doesn't seem to be the only thing that he could end up in. Too. Oh yeah, so. I mean, it, it might be an issue of him wanting to go more into the acting role. He just that's likes true wrestling. Too. That's true too. I, I don't know. I never really got into a deep conversation with him about no, it. So. No. But uh, uh, amazing match. Uh, Justin Labar, of course, getting involved in there. Which, <laughs> what is with like whenever there's a cancellation? First, Chuck Roberts replaced Matt Cross in a match against John McChesney. <laughs> which, hey, any time for him to come out to Hulk Hogan's theme music is just an opportunity in its own right. Well, first off, I'm not sure if you know about this. Every trainee under the Chuck regime of the Iron Wrestling Academy has taken the Hulk up comeback, a big boot and a leg drop. From Chuck. From Chuck? Yes, you. Everyone's wait, taking. You, the, you, wait, you're telling me that Chuck gets in the ring and yeah, and he'll, does he'll, this? he'll hulk up on you, give you three punches, whip you, give you the boot, and then leg drop you and you pinned. Every trainee <laughs> ever has taken this. I've taken it like three times, but like <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he like it's this one moment he has that. And maybe occasional, occasional body slam you instead of hitting the big boot. But still, yeah, he hulk ups, he hulks up on you. It's a Chuck Roberts signature. Ask any, ask Roger Corpo, ask Vic, ask does, anyone that went through the Iron Rest Academy. They've been hulked up on. Does does Plummer have a similar? No, thing Plum, yet, Plummer's or? a spear now. He just talks about a spear still. He's like, oh, see that spear, see that spear. He loves the spear. He's like uh, Goldberg out there. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I even to see this now. I, I wish there was a camera in the training. Plummer, academy Plummer now. doesn't run it anymore. Like Chuck, would like every now and then, be like. Oh, oh. All right, brother. All right, all right, pal. Yeah, okay. all right, pal. No, he said brother. It's Hulk. Oh, time. he said brother. It's Hulk time. It's Hulk time. Pal, pal is business time. Yeah, yeah. yeah pal is business time. And no, Plumber just kind of watches and takes care of business. He doesn't feel the need to fake beat us up. <laughs> That's good. How refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised by any of this. Um, anyways, uh, uh, back to the show. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. You guys have any other notes? Uh, Riz, you know, you, you, Riz. Oh, oh Bob, you got something else? I have one more thing. I'm interested to see where the, they go with the uh, main event thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Crimson getting involved with Tommy Dreamer. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a good match. Uh, Crimson's awesome on the mic, I thought. Mm-hmm. It's really good. So. Good stuff. Yeah, Crimson is a fun character, it, it, you know, it, and with this, you know, he did a lot of that. Um, I don't know, it might be a, a, a best of here coming up sooner or later from from uh, Joe Dombrowski. Uh, but uh, you know, stuff he, he did, he did some similar stuff in Prime Wrestling. Really developed that mm-hmm. that Crimson character. Um, and it's 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 another face paint guy, but mm-hmm. I think it's so well done. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like they just throw face paint on some guys. And some of these groups, and they're like, there, he's a new character, you know, but not all of them are doing great things like Gory and, and G-Raver do, for instance, right? 
I mean, I mean, they they really own that thing. You know, seeing Gene Graver's transformation over the last couple of years has been tremendous. Roger Corp was terrified of him. Like that character. Really? Yeah, he's like, Dude, if we ever have to wrestle him, you're tagging in instantly. I can't handle this. <laughs> he's like, you're going in. I'll 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 mess with Gory, but something about his eyes, man. Just tag in. You're going it. You you have to work the spots to him. Well, see, you haven't seen uh, in RWA. They uh, have the confetti cannons, which I'm sure are everywhere now. I'm I'm amazed they haven't <laughs> popped up on IWC. Don't start, please, fans. What do you, what do you mean, Joe? Joe Brooks brings the confetti cannons. He's the king of it. Yeah, but he's the only one. In VOW and RWA, everybody else brings the confetti cannons and shoots them in the ring like ROH style. And oh, then G Raver. Wait, wait, wait. Are, are, are they, I feel like buying streamers would be more economically sound. You would think so. And yeah. easier to and clean up. Dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. let's How many times I've been, I've, I've just had confetti on my back randomly at mm -hmm. an IWC show? Too many. Too Everybody many. had confetti in, during the night, like the whole, whole night through. And that's not even not that's not even half as bad as an RWA or VOW show. It's, so I, it's, I haven't it's been rough. to a VOW show in a while, mm -hmm. so it's it's gotten pretty bad. And they're sweeping every every after. I'm trying to get them to do an RWA to sweep it up because it just looks bad after like halfway through the night. Yeah. But but G Raver gets in there and he plays with it like a little kid and tosses up in the air and starts smiling <laughs> with that look. Yeah, yeah. He he. They both those two guys. It's do. the greatest creepiest thing. Yeah, they 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 do it. They do it well. That's all you say. They own it mm -hmm. for sure. Awesome. Uh, anything else, Bobby? They also need to clean up the cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> At least Tommy Dreamer <laughs> didn't find it and eat it this time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I was, I was saddened by that kind of Oh, thing. he made that little kid's life too. When he, when he told him to spit the, the water and the, yeah. Um, oh, but, the uh, little kid, uh, you probably didn't see this from wherever you were probably watching, but there, he gives us the kid, like, like, the kid sold it too. Like yeah, the kid, like wound yeah. up on it and like did this little kind of head bob thing and spit the water in his face. Wait, he new jacked him. Yeah, yeah, he new jacked, jacked him. Yeah, yeah pretty much yes. new jacked him. <laughs> yes, I can't remember who was it. RJ? It had to have been RJ City. No, it was Labar. It, it was Labar. Labar. Okay, it was Labar. Yeah. Jeez. Hey, what did you think of little Labar getting in there in the ring <laughs> <laughs> when he took off his jacket? And then like immediately ran out of the ring. <laughs> yeah, the bar taking off his yeah. jacket finally has been like a two or three year uh, build up. Mm. I thought he said jacket off in December. Did he? Did he? Oh, because he was getting in there to fight too. Yeah. yeah. But still, I know. Well, I know Dabrowski kind of gets. Because the one time when the show was outside because of reasons, yeah. um, and he was still wearing the leather jacket in the sun. Were you talking about the West Virginia show? <laughs> yeah, the West Virginia show. Oh, that that okay. That show first off is is my second ring crew ever. Voluntary. Me <gasps> me and RJ oh. show up voluntarily. We're building we're building the ring. And Chuck goes, Hey, uh, can you guys put the cage in here? We're like. <laughs> no, no, we can't. Ring's half halfway built, halfway built. Hmm. I'm like, just throw a hardcore match, Chuck. No one know the difference. And they're like, nope, nope. <laughs> you guys have to rebuild the ring outside, and we had to rebuild the ring outside. You know, the interesting thing, and I don't think I've ever real revealed this publicly, but uh, for you know, they had kind of an intermission, then they had like a mini intermission to put the cage up. Mm -hmm. Guy comes over to me. That was one of the I don't know fire volunteer guys or something. He comes mm -hmm. over, you know. I think we actually could have fit that cage through the door. I was like, you don't tell us to anybody else here. Yeah. After I'm, we just did all the entire show outside. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly, I, and I haven't worked outside. I like people like, oh, the mat's hot. It's like, this is not good. I'm like, yeah. So what? the best was a uh, second base brawl they did when hentai was selling the hot ring. <laughs> I was it, uh, was the main, like the four way, uh, eight man with sexual harassment, baby face fire. Was it Delirious versus Dennis in that match too? I cannot remember. Yeah, I think it was. It's the one where they're up in the parking lot and not actually in the field. Yeah, okay. when we did it down in Ellsworth, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, it was. Shark Boy was on the show? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was. I, yeah, I remember that now too. That's like in my training, that's the funny thing is like Hentai and Justin, I'm like, what, what happened? What happened? And I'm like, this is what happened to you. Like, I just have like idiot savant memory for this thing. Wait, wait. So they're trying to figure out what happened in the match between them? Or just like a match they had. They like, had. And I'll just tell them, I'm like, no, this is and, what happened. And, and then they have <laughs> you, the fans. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. this is what happened. Yeah, it's like idiot spot. I don't know how I remember this. Well, stuff. it's like, you know, we still remember probably our second show that we went to as a group or the first, probably the first we took a lot of the Mayhem guys, mm -hmm. like, like Will and, and them from the last show was the uh the ladder match from november pain i think two or three uh between hentai and troy lords which is so, one of the most brutal matches that, that was I think before i, I really seen. got into it like i think whenever they switched the court time maybe a year or two after that's when i like i'm right really good on it 
but like before that it's like sporadic like, i remember watching mm-hmm. like iwc ignition on like some random channel that's how i discovered it i discovered an 18 year old shima zion right and- right i discovered it via that and was thinking about going and then i ran into jason gory wearing a uh, icp uh two dope f off shirt at a dope show and says you should come down and see it and because i was in the juggalo stuff at the time nice. i knew me from that i was like sure and i drug chachi and here we are now <laughs> here we are <laughs> here we are now it's crazy how life works yep all right uh but uh check it out the dance that's a great name <clears throat> yeah see me get beat up see him get beat I up i get beat up really well <laughs> i'm really good at getting like if you watch the last couple of iwc shows i'm i'm like the new job squad pin me pay me i'm like on a roll you, beat up. I mean, yeah you're getting you're, you're taking it from the from the old the old guys and the founding fathers yeah, i get back chopped yeah. back raked back chopped. i poked name it I'm, wait wait you first you have vegas and gregory who's got to be rough in there because you're the new guys you know and then you got jock samson and Brian castle as well I, like i said i don't know what, what castle's like but, but castle's amazing too yeah, i'm just saying yeah. he, you know he's he's a solid worker and he wants to make it look good so his splash hurts very bad <laughs> it's he's a 300 pound man squashing me and uh, usually it's just like oh god i just walk out like give me everyone just let me get, take a second but yeah it, it's the second time i took it and it doesn't get any easier and I, i'm like trying to protect myself like position myself where i like have give and no it just doesn't work it just doesn't <laughs> <laughs> all right and of course we'll talk about more uh as it comes up as it release matches uh super indie coming up uh mid june here uh find all the information at iwcwrestling.com at darren underscore De Niro. twitter and instagram i put mm-hmm. a lot of random stuff on there i think i'm funny i'm not but i think i'm funny so it's close enough tell him how funny he is or isn't yourself yeah, that or if you like muscle picks i'll throw those on there too ladies some of the guys hey there it's 2015 go. that's cool now what it's 2015 it's cool for your guy like that Oh, it's cool. You yeah, know, I support yeah. it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he ain't scared. He ain't I'm scared. Not scared. Nope. Tough. Nope. I'll I'll blow you up about tough enough. Watch my video and watch oiled up muscles. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Self promotion. There you go. And go check out his uh, uh, tough enough video as well. Uh, real quick, I want to touch base with uh, Wheels here. RWA this weekend. All I know is you have Tracy Smothers, and damn it, I'm going to miss it for a dance recital. I have to film back home. You and those dance recitals, I feel bad for you, Sorg. Uh, you know what? It's for family. It's for family. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's well, a, family is important. It's for family, and it's actually kind of a good gig. So, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, it's, it's family, and family is important. And Tracy Smothers, you never know. Maybe they're next month. Not and I know you'll probably know. have dancing a, a recital of sorts, probably with Tracy Smothers in there. So, you know. Well, if you don't dance, everybody does. Have you encountered Tracy Smothers, Darren? <laughs> um, not personally, but I've heard legends. Oh, yes. Uh, he's an old-time well, IWC guy. Yeah, Southern Comfort. Yeah, Southern Anderson. Comfort. I'm, I'm, I, Watch them on Ignition TV. <laughs> Him and, yeah, versus uh, was it was it uh, was it Devil's Rejects? Uh, Devil's Advocates? No, not them. It was it was whatever Hentai and uh, Sebastian Dark's name. Oh, was it was this Unholy Alliance at the time? I, I think it was probably probably going into Unholy Alliance. But I thought they had another name yeah, for I it. I think it was in Unholy Alliance. Was yeah, Unholy Alliance? So, yeah. Okay, I I thought they had another cool name for it. <laughs> That's it was something like that, but I I one of my favorite matches watching with Tracy Smothers was him and Chris Hamrick and IWC and Hamrick doing the hanging upside down with his leg being caught in the rope. And everybody's like, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, what's wrong? Is he okay? Is he okay? And I forget who he was against at the time. Wasn't it the Gambinos? I, See, I, these I are the long-time the fans right here. Yeah. Between- I, I'm pretty sure um, – Aaron, were you used as a weapon once by Jimmy DeMarco? Yes, I was. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, that's burned out of my memory. Against, against Necro Butcher. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I love how Darren just like, wait a minute. My, my wrestling idiot savant just hit – you were the wrestling yeah, <laughs> were an object. Yeah. Okay, yes, okay. I Here's will. the fun part. This is so inside baseball, but what show was that? Oh, oh shit. The one with Darren. The, was, that, was that a Super <laughs> Indie 2? It was a Super Indie. That was the year where they had... Davey a, Richards. They had a Scorpio. two... I don't know who was on it, but that was the two-day. Yeah. That was day yeah. one. And for some reason, I wasn't working that day. You know I didn't go to day two. Just went to day didn't one. go to day two. Just you, went to day one. You missed Necro Butcher chasing Chuck Roberts and him galloping around the place, because he's still a ring announcer at the time, and for some reason, he was atta- he was going after him. And he hurt... <laughs> all they had was the guardrails for the entrance. That's it. And he hurtled over And he hurtled yeah, over him. It was majestic, too, yeah. like a gazelle. <laughs> That is that is a great that's that's 
Yeah, I remember that because that next night, Necro's coming out of the entryway and he looks over at me and he just backs up slowly <laughs> and creeps around me. <laughs> Oh, that, that is good, good times. Good, oh. clean fun. Jimmy DeMarco, another one of my heroes. I am Jimmy. I can't say enough things. Just Jimmy DeMarco has inspired my life probably more than he should have. <laughs> <laughs> probably more than anybody. <laughs> uh, yes, he's uh, I think he uh, holds the record for most times on the Mayhem show. For good reason. I mean, I've mm-hmm. had a talk show. I'd have him on every week. Plus, he lives like three blocks away. But yeah, I only see wait, one. From wait, like he's only three blocks away? He's, he's just over the hill. I might need to go. And I'm pretty sure he's the other side him. Of I the might tracks. just call him up and be like, hey, what are you doing right now? And can we just hang out? <laughs> <laughs> and talk about muscles and testosterone. And Strangely, stuff. I've invited him over. I'm like, hey, man, let's hang out. Let's have a beer, you know. But he will only come by if I've invited him on the show. So I don't know what the deal is there. I don't even run into him at the, up by the coffee shop or anything. That's... But I know he's in the area. Although, although, true... I was up at up Brew today, and a guy walked in, and I thought it was him. He has a doppelganger in no. the neighborhood. I mean, think, and I think he was a volunteer fireman, so it was no way it was DeMar. Ooh, that's nice. I mean, doppelgangers are pretty cool. I'm not going There was one when I was subbing. kid looked exactly like me. It was really creepy. Oh, also, sort of has a like JBL. Of that's, too. that's the one in the street, too. Yeah. He has one in Las Vegas. It's a bike cop. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anyways, uh, RWA, we're doing a bad job of promoting oh, your yeah, show sure, here. Yeah. So, because we like we, then we just talk, talk about IWC again. But uh, RWA, so you got that. Tracy Spellers. What else is going on over there? Uh, we got a, a final showdown between friends of the show, Generation Dead versus the Forbidden Warriors, the Grand Akuma and Junhato, which should be another. Barn burner. I enjoy watching those four work together and everything. And we have Sanjay Dutt versus Shane Andrews for the Cruiserweight title. So Great matches. Uh, I'm glad Shane, Shane Andrews came back after the fan strap match last month. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whew. I, I, you and I have our opinions on that, Sorg, and I like it, but they're nuts. I love our Why fans. would you give those fans? That, I'm sorry, Wheels. Go ahead, I, I've Riz. been to one RWA show in which and somebody's mother, uh, in which that somebody's show mother featured a la- a lady getting pal driven by a wrestler, mm-hmm. a lady in the crowd yes. getting pal driven. Ryan Mitchell's mom. Pal driven. I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was his introduction to RWA. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, coming in hot, right? Yeah. It's, it's, exactly. But the, those fans. With whips and it was straps. Well, I mean, they didn't have whips. Whipping, no, no, <laughs> they still hurt. Um, but having those fans with straps, they could kill. I think somebody. it was a lot. I thought it was a lot worse watching Jesse Bell smack poor uh, Esteban Taylor. <laughs> she laid into him by accident, and I went. You were worried about the fans? We're talking about Jesse Bell Smothers, <laughs> who just smacked the guy on his back. By the way, like in the area, RWA, the only show left that does not have guardrails. Mm-mm. Yes. And I'm wondering when that's going to change. <laughs> Whenever we get a bigger building, because we put guardrails in that place and... It's not happening. Gonna, it's not happening. Yeah. Nobody's going anywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I wrestled a show without guardrails, I'd be going to the crowd every 30 seconds. I'd be like, long, give me an excuse to go three rows deep. Just, oh, yeah? I, I wrestled Palace in five-star for guardrails, and I'm like, hey, I'm taking my dive. Let me go three rows deep. He's like, no, no, don't jump in the crowd. Don't jump in the crowd. Like, so I just left like an awkward like, catch and like, oh. Is, it, you, is that just something like you, you've been the guy that's like moved out of the way for them so many times? and it's. Uh... I, I just want to see the reaction. When, and you have like a, a guy my size that's like, I'm not going to like, Try to hurt. I'm just like I'll be like spread myself out so I'm easily caught. Mm-hmm. But I just want to see like if you want to be Spike Dudley. I literally said <laughs> during the Royal Rumbles, I want to be press slam three rows deep and see what happens. Well, anyone even a trapper would be like, oh god, no, not this guy. He's too big. But yeah, it's you know goals in life. Mine's to be uh, thrown to the, the crowd. Our crazy crowd, Darren though, they'd move and you'd probably slam into those. Uh, then I'd have a really cool really death there then. I'd go out with style. Because ours are smart. They actually do move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. They've, they've, they've had... Oh, there's a couple that don't, but some of them can't move. Yeah. But anyways, I wouldn't tempt it there. But 
No. All right, lessons. RWA, a lot of great stuff going in there. Uh, Sanjay Dutt's been there uh, a, a good bit here. Where the, and you guys have great people coming in and out, and it sounds like you got uh, a few interesting names coming up soon. And of course, Tracy Smothers being among. So, if if you have the opportunity, if you're in the uh, southwestern PA area, uh, go check out just to see Tracy Smothers um, and the watch the insanity in person. Is, is, is definitely yes. worth it. RWALive.com. I know it's been a little delayed here. The DVDs should be shipping this week if you're uh, picking up uh, Spring Fling uh, 2015. Uh, had a little bit of delay on the artwork. No big deal. No big deal. Had me some alterations. Uh, yes, but yes. Uh, Because somebody isn't wrestling anymore. So, but we yeah, do. Yeah, that, that happens. <laughs> yeah. It seems like that's the running theme lately with wrestling. So... But honestly, it's like, yeah, follow us on Twitter. Check out mm -hmm. rwalive.com. Our Twitter is picking up more with more comments, and our wrestlers are getting into things. So good. keep your eye open. You may be surprised what you're going to see. Awesome. Go check it out. Um, and uh, thank you, everybody, who's been joining us in the chat room. Uh, Rip City Uprising has been joining us, and uh, so uh, you can join us too. We're about 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central here on the uh, on, on Live at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. Oh crap! Hey, Eamon, are you asleep over there? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just realized. Realize, I, I, I just realized I, just, I haven't I heard mean, haven't heard from my co-host in like half an hour. Hey, did you no, have anything? Okay. I, well, you guys were going into to, you know IWC and RUA, and obviously I've I've not been to the shows, but no, I. I, I I, I, I've been I've been listening. I've been I've been keeping track of everything. Get in your car. I I got in my car. I'll get in my car. I'll get <laughs> my there car. you go. There you go. I want to get Bobby. You need to get in a car with me, and we get, need to go visit Inspire Pro Wrestling down in uh, Texas. Take sure. Oh, down okay. There, okay, there yeah. you go. Make sure you have, have a big trunk. I, I have a friend who lives in Houston. Have I'm very fun. cheap. There you I go. I'm very very cheap, and I will take a lot of dumb moves and give a lot of cool dumb moves. <laughs> I'll be worth the what we need. There you go. Sign Amen. me up. There you go, Amen. Get it. Get Darren booked. Hashtag Get Darren booked. <laughs> the narrow world tour the narrow world tour hashtag we'll hashtag uh uh darren soon to be international world tour Come oh, oh we didn't talk about <laughs> we that we didn't talk about that so, that's right so well, well, real quick where, where are you going uh I, I, haven't, I haven't told my parents officially accepted so when they find this out they're gonna be really pissed at me because i oh, said no. yes yeah but uh, it's all right it's gonna work uh because of tough enough work. <laughs> because i have the money it's cool uh because of tough enough i actually got offered my first uh, overseas tour in for ldn wrestling in england so uh nice. end of october early november i'm gonna uh go represent the good us, US of a you're gonna go where you're gonna like have flag tights and and, and all probably that not. Stuff. I mean, it's it's, it's it's a quick ten day tour. It's a cool experience. I'm just really excited to say I wrestled in a different country and this crazy wrestling thing actually isn't as crazy as it sounds. You got to go go across to another country because I don't have of a wrestling. passport right now. I need that, to get on that. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's really is because of tough enough video guys like. A nice tough enough video. Good luck. And I'm like, hey, I'm gonna message this dude. And he just messaged me like, hey, if you're ever in England, want to wrestle? I'm like, well, would you want to work out a deal? And he's like, yeah. Then. So the one life lesson I have to give everyone is get a resistance band, do bicep curls, do push-ups, and put baby oil on yourself, and you never know what will happen. I don't think that's going to work for me. <laughs> Believe it, Sword. Believe it. I'm going to try it. it tomorrow. Try it. I'll send, I'll send you a preview of the video. We'll see how good, it works I, out. Good. Right. Yeah, I like that. I'll, I'll, I'll CC Dan Hooven and uh, Justin Plummer on that, too. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. Eamon, Eamon you, get, you get a turn at that, too. Definitely, yes. <laughs> yeah, Eamon's InspireProWrestling.com at Eamon2, please. Thank you at Hot Wheels RWA. Check out RWALive.com for information on those shows and DVD releases. Uh, at Bobby F. J. Town at the E. Riz. They actually operate and run and I don't know. They do stuff over there. And they're going to begin dot com. Boss we're, Battle we're is the podcast. Around, as well as Riz Plays Games, his new yes. Let's Play. Yes, I'm getting those plugs in tonight, Riz. I'm helping you Thank out. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Sorg. Um, I think it's everything. Twitter we got account it. will be coming up shortly. WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the links and everything. Just please subscribe to us. Share it with your friends. Let us know. Is there anybody you think we should be uh, picking up here and, and talking to uh, in the coming weeks? We have some uh, great stuff. We got, uh, we're got. we talking to the Strong Style brand brand here in a couple weeks Ooh, nice. yeah i need to get a shirt I, I want a shirt if i just need you on it i'm new to them so you maybe you can fill me in on that after the show yeah but uh but they they're they're all over the place and uh yeah, we they're... got in contact with them and you know we're we'll see we're gonna talk with them in a couple that's, weeks that's also awesome. uh i believe pencil in preliminarily scheduled uh mary elizabeth monroe the current current queen of the ring with vow and she's been making the rounds as well we'll be talking with to her in about a month 
um, or so, late late June, and I think we are penciled in for Dalton Castle to be the first time on any nice. Mayhem show before nice. Super. This, you mean this guy? What what guy? Oh, I don't have you, I don't have you set up the pic. He's got the picture. He's got the picture up. I just have Eamon in my shot. So <laughs> I got his daughter. So Bobby's a big fan of the Dalton Castle. So it was, he had his his moment. Who so. isn't a fan of Dalton Castle? I love that man. All right, thank you everybody for joining us and staying up late with us. If you're with us live, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Darren. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Support Indy Russ. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the blood. Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Wow Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com For all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle <laughs>